Hey folks, this is Kalani. A whole bunch of classes are getting buffed or nerfed this week, and some of the changes are going to be very impactful, so that's always exciting. We also have some updates for the 10.1.7 PTR to go over, as well as a new catch-up mechanic for a very surprising older feature. I know you're all itching to find out whether your class was nerfed or not, so let's break it all down and see who is getting a helping hand with these changes this week, and who might just be on the chopping block. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Let's kick things off with the class changes because we have quite a few to go over. To start with, going into this week, Holy Paladins received some very nasty nerfs. These were squeezed in just before the Tuesday reset, so if you didn't hear about them, I wouldn't be too surprised. They saw an 8% decrease to all of their healing, which is already pretty bad, but on top of that they got a 12% nerf to all of their damage, and another 15% decrease on Tears Deliverance. So big nerfs for Holy Paladin at the start of this week. There's also a massive mana regen nerf, but that only applies to PvP, but if you PvP, that is going to be very important as well. The other class that saw some changes this week is Augmentation Evoker. I guess the whole infinite stacking buffs thing wasn't taken into account when this was designed. We saw some incredible feats in the past week where over 20 Augmentation Evokers in a single group can supercharge a couple of DPS to kill raid bosses in about 20 seconds. That probably wasn't an intended feature of this new spec, so Augmentation Evokers have seen a few changes too. Spatial Paradox will increase the melee range of certain spells for certain healers, so that's going to be nice. Ebon Might, Prescience and Shifting Sands can only stack up to four times on the same character, so you can't have every evoker buffing the same one player in a massive raid. And then Breath of Eons can no longer proc the Fate Mirror effect, because I guess that was a little too strong. So mainly just reining in the potential shenanigans that can happen with the new support playstyle in the game. These changes are currently live, they were pushed sometime this week, but we do have a lot more buffs and nerfs coming for a whole bunch of other classes with the next weekly reset, which would be Tuesday, July 25th. So the Blood Death Knights still aren't where they need to be, they're getting another damage increase, 10% across the board this time. This is, what, the fourth or fifth straight damage buff for Blood Death Knight in a row? With how some of the other tanks are doing right now, they're going to have to keep going if they want more players to pick up Blood Death Knight instead of one of the other tanks, but another 10% damage boost is coming through for the Blood Death Knights. Speaking of other tanks, Guardian Druid has a quick nerf coming their way. Ursoc's Fury Absorb Shield is being reduced down to 50% of Thrash and Mole damage when it used to be 60%, so not a massive nerf, but it will reduce their survivability just a teeny bit. Augmentation Evokers have some more impactful changes coming with the weekly reset, mainly aimed at reducing their effectiveness in dungeons, reducing their buff potential, while increasing their personal damage at the same time. So their passive that increases the effectiveness of their buffs while not in a raid is being cut down to a 20% bonus, down from a 40% bonus. That's definitely going to hurt their dungeon and solo play quite a bit, but there was a bug fix that makes sure Closer's Clutch Mace increases the damage of the Evokers properly, so hopefully that helps a bit. Ebon Might now increases the Evoker's damage by 20% up from 10%, and Eruption is going to see a 40% damage increase, so there's the personal damage upgrade for Augmentation. Fate Mirror's chance to occur was reduced down to 15% from 20%, and Aspect's favour for Black Attunement was knocked down to a 7 and 10% increase, down from a 10 and 16% increase, so quite a few nerfs, as well as a handful of buffs to change up how an augmentation evoker contributes to a group. I personally really enjoy the buff playstyle, so I hope that doesn't fall to the wayside just because it's difficult to balance. Hunters also made the cut for this week's round of buffs, and it does all seem to be buffs, which is very nice to see. For Beast Mastery, Barbed Shot, Cobra Shot, and Kill Shot damage are all increased by 15%. For Marksmanship, Trick Shot, Aim Shot, and Rapid Fire Ricochets will deal 65% of their normal damage up from 55%, so a nice cleave and AoE buff right there. And then Survival is actually still on the dev team's list of specializations. Who knew? I was worried that Survival had been completely forgotten about at this point, Point, but they're going to get a 5% increase for Mongoose Bite and Raptor Strike damage, as well as a 10% increase to Flanking Strike and Kill Command damage, so some nice damage buffs for survival as well. 
Up next we have the Monks, there are going to be some nerfs first for Brewmaster, 20% damage reduction on Spinning Crane Kick, and a 5% damage reduction for Keg Smash, so they won't be dealing quite as much damage in AoE scenarios especially, but then we actually have some buffs for Windwalker. Rising Sun Kick, Fists of Fury, and Blackout Kick are all increased by 10%, with a 15% increase for Tiger Palm down at the bottom there. So Brewmasters will do less damage, but Windwalkers should be doing quite a bit more damage as we head into next week. Protection Paladins will join the club this week with a very nice 8% damage increase for all of their abilities, so it's not just the Blood Death Knights seeing some damage increases as far as tanks go. The Priests are up next, and Shadow is getting a whole bunch of changes yet again. There's a quick buff for Luminous Barrier for Disc Priest, and then the rest of this long list is all for Shadow. Psychic Link is getting knocked down yet again, this time down to 15%, and Void Spike damage to targets within 10 yards has been reduced by 30%, so they're going to take a pretty big hit to their cleave and AoE damage, but then all of their single target is being increased by the looks of things. We've got 12% increases to Devouring Plague, Mind Blast, Void Bolt, Mind Flay and Insanity, Mind Spike and Insanity, as well as Shadow Word Death. Then there are some mana cost increases for healing spells as well. So another nerf to Shadow Priest AoE, but a big buff to most of their single target damage. It's interesting to see so many changes for Shadow Priest still coming through. It's like they can't quite decide where Shadow should be, or how it should play, and which kinds of damage it should excel at. Hopefully we don't have yet another Shadow Priest rework in a future patch, because at this point they've changed more than many other classes. Moving on, Shamans also made the list this week, Resto is going to see a 5% increase for all of their abilities, and range of restorative mists from Ascendance is now 40 yards up from 20, but the initial burst remains down at 20 yards, so a little bit of extra range and some nice healing buffs. And then squeaking in right at the end, Prot Warriors will also see a 7% damage increase across the board, so quite a few tanks will see big buffs very shortly. And then just to remind you, this round of changes will go live with the next weekly reset. I would usually talk about the PTR changes next, but we don't actually have any class changes on the PTR just yet. Maybe they're waiting to see how classes and specs settle on live servers before they start changing everything again on the PTR. That kind of makes sense. There are a lot of buffs and nerfs happening happening to try and balance the current live game, especially with the augmentation of Oka's throwing a spanner and everything, so tackling a bunch of future PTR changes on top of that might be a bit too much. We do have some other updates for the patch 10.1.7 PTR though, including some new types of content. It looks like every dragon riding race throughout the Dragon Isles will be getting a new challenge mode option. These are only available for a few zones on the PTR right now, but the general idea seems to be giving you the same kind of course, but the main challenge is going to come through in the form of resource management. You won't get any extra vigor throughout the course, so it's only passive regen by the looks of things. This actually made it pretty hard to complete the course in time for the gold medals because you have to pick and choose where to use your boosts and try and maximize your passive regen throughout the entire run. It's a different kind of difficulty and I'm glad that they're still adding new options to the dragon riding races because I think it's a really cool idea in general. The races were a really good addition to the game and with races coming to the old world and old zones adding in these kinds of options for them is also great for future content updates as well. That's kind of it for the PTR this week, but there is one last thing I wanted to go over in this video, which is a new catch-up mechanic for quite an old piece of content at this point, the Forbidden Reach. So this is now in the game, this seemed to come through with the latest patch, and you can now purchase Scaravolt keys for Dragon Isle supplies. So 50 supplies will get you one key, which is pretty cheap considering how abundant supplies are for the most part. And then just in case you didn't know, Scaravolt keys can be used to open doors in the Scaravolt activity, which isn't altogether too relevant anymore, but you might still want to work through the vaults for a variety of reasons. The first main reason you might want to go back is to just clear up some leftover achievements. There are a lot of little tidbits squirreled away in the vaults, recipes, toys, pets, mounts, and just general completion achievements like opening all the doors. There was quite a bit of content squeezed into that system, so if you didn't manage to complete it all, the key vendor makes it much easier to go back and just get straight to it, instead of wondering how you're going to go about farming the keys before you get to the stuff you actually want to do. And then if you never did this activity before, 
all of that stuff is there waiting for you and you don't have to go through the hassle of killing rares to get the keys anymore so it's going to be much easier for you too. And then the second main reason would be to collect the onyx amulet ring and primordial stones and upgrade them. Now you may be thinking well that's way too late the ring just got nerfed into oblivion and you're not entirely wrong all of the damage effects were cut down by about 40% making the ring much less powerful than it was before but it was arguably way too powerful the way it was. With the nerf it's probably worth about its item level which is 424 if you get everything upgraded maybe a little more if your class still benefits from the stone powers more than others maybe a little less if it doesn't so it does still depend on your spec and class. So instead of it being usable until you get an item level 440 or above ring now you can use it as the item level 424 ring it actually is. You'll replace it sooner sure but you can still get a good piece of gear for open world content or solo players or maybe for one of your lower geared alts. The ring isn't completely worthless it's just not as good as it was before. The ring also wasn't nerfed for healers from what I understand so if you're healing and you don't have access to rings above the 430 435 mark the onyx annular is still probably a good pickup for you the ring also has quite a bit of potential for speed farming especially in older content there are various powers and stones you can use to increase your movement speed or you can get extra self-sustain or defensive capabilities on classes that otherwise don't have access to that kind of stuff and it's generally just a good piece of gear for old content especially. So if you love to run old raids that might be something to look into as well. The main reason that this new vendor option is so important is because the Forbidden Reach is kind of dead content at this point. You won't find many players still hanging around here which makes it very problematic to get the Scaravolt keys naturally. The best source was killing rares in the zone but the rares are usually too powerful to kill by yourself making getting keys just very tedious and annoying in general. But now we don't have to worry about that, you can just buy them for supplies and finish up whatever vault activities you might still have. But that's all the class changes, buffs and nerfs coming this week as well as some updates for patch 10.1.7 so that's it for this video. What do you think of this round of buffs and nerfs? How do you feel about augmentation of Oka being limited going forward and has augmentation been a good addition to the game or do you think it will just cause more issues than it's worth? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members who are on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every Every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video you can find links in the description of a patreon or click the join button just below this video and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video thanks for watching folks good luck and have fun and as always i will see you next time